This is the fifth section of chapter eight on critical path analysis. And this section is about how to find the float of an activity. So what is the float of an activity? Well, the float of an activity is the amount of time that the start time of an activity may be delayed without delaying the finish time of a project. So for example, let's say somebody was building a house and a carpenter comes in, he's got some work to do, and his work normally takes him three days to do. But let's say on the uh, planning charts for the building of the house, uh, a carpenter is given up to five days. So if the carpenter is delayed by two days um, at the start, or it takes him two days longer, it's not going to delay the finish time of the house being built. So there's a difference between how long it actually takes him to do his task and the actual time they've got to do their task. Now to calculate the total float for an activity, we need the latest finish time minus the duration minus the earliest finish time. Let's put it another way. Let's say that we've got these early and late event times either side of an activity like this and let's say that this activity has a duration of um, x actually yeah we'll use x and um, its late finish time is y and its early start time is z okay so notice how we've sort of got this type of sort of pattern going on a diagonal downward pattern. If we want to work out this total float, it's basically Y minus X minus Z. So you're doing like a subtraction going across like this, Y minus X minus Z. That's the same as what this is, but you may find that sort of pattern easier to remember. Example 10, determine the total float of each activity in this network. Okay, so let's start with activity A. So we need to remember this sort of pattern here. So if I highlighted it, this type of thing here is going to help us remember that its float is going to be 3 minus 3 minus 0. So it's going to be zero. So I'll move on to activity B. So we'll do the same sort of thing, maybe a bit more tricky because it's sort of sideways. Sometimes it's easier to sort of look at it, having it drawn straight rather than sideways. So the top of the first box, the bottom of the second box. So this is going to be nine minus six minus three, so that has a float of zero. Moving on now to activity C. So C, that will be 11 minus four, minus three. So that's like 11 minus seven, so that leaves a float of four. Then activity D, so I'll get rid of this. Hopefully now we should be able to see how to do it without drawing that in like that. So that would be 11 minus 2 minus 9, which is 0. Now any activity that has a float of 0 is going to be a uh, critical activity because that's going to delay the time of the project. Now we're on to E. So E will be 12 minus 1 minus 7. So 12 minus 1 minus 7. That leaves us with 4. On to activity F. So F is here 16 minus 4 minus 7. 16 minus 4 minus 7. That will leave um, a flow of 5. G here. So 16 minus 5 minus 11. 16 minus 5 minus 11 
um, that will leave us with, that's going to be zero, isn't it, for G and then H. That will be 16 minus 4 minus 9. 16 minus 4 minus 9, leaving a float of 3. Now, although this question doesn't ask about um, critical activities or critical events, we can use the float to see which of the events are critical. So um, A is critical, B is critical, D is critical, and G is critical. So there we see the critical path. So critical activities are going to have a float of zero because they cannot be delayed. If they get delayed, then the finish time for the product or for the whole project will be delayed. So you should now be able to do exercise 8E on page 237 of the textbook.